You can't fake hard tickets, man. You, no. can't. you can't fake the reaction when they touch that microphone yeah. where you're the headliner. Like, we have Madison Square Garden coming up. That's pretty much sold out. Can't fake that, man. When that guy touches that stage, it's going to be pandemonium <laughs> in there. <laughs> I'm so thrilled to be welcoming in on the One More Time podcast, legendary American actor, it's Tay Diggs. <laughs> Tay. Have you ever gotten that? Never. Never. <laughs> God damn it, Henry. <laughs> fucked up again. Who have you got? Uh, I've got an Akon. Oh, that was on my list. Jesus. Yeah. So much better. It was on my list. Not an Akon, but not Tay Diggs. Oh man. my God. All right, all jokes aside, we have artist manager at High Bridge, the label. You know A Boogie, you know Don Q, and many more. We got M in the building. What's up, what's up, what's up? I don't even want to butcher your last name, bro. Can you just tell me how it's how it's said? So um, I'm, my parents are from Ghana, so yeah. it's pronounced a champong boating. Mm-hmm. Yep. I would have fucked that up so bad. <laughs> Guateng, I feel like I've seen that name on like FIFA. Yep. There's some uh, <laughs> soccer players, yeah. right? They're yeah. pretty good. That name is pretty popular. There's uh -huh. like Williams or Robin Robinson. Or uh -huh. like yeah, I've I've made some mistakes thinking that just because you know. I, th I think it was a Nigerian last name that two people in the music industry have that I just ignorantly assumed that they were brothers and it was yeah, yeah. A, it was a bad mistake. <laughs> so we're not going to go yeah. there. You just did. I, well, I mean, you Brought know, they're up. not going to know who the fuck it is. <laughs> uh, but no, man. So the Better Off Alone, I would say the, the bulk of the Better Off Alone world tour from A Boogie is about to kick off here in April. I know you've yes, had sir. a couple dates so far, but you guys are heading out to New Zealand and Australia and then, you know, yes, making sir. the trip around the globe. Mm -hmm. I, thought I, just, I thought I would just start off by like, obviously A Boogie's world tour right now has to be at least a little bit, if not a lot different than like the first a yes. Boogie tour. Like mm -hmm. let's, let's go back down memory lane a little bit. Like mm -hmm. what's your memory of like the first boogie tour compared to what we got coming up because oh, i feel like they man. have to be like pretty different uh, the the word that i that I, that's coming to mind is scale everything's been scaled up you know what i'm saying we when, when we started it was just to track with a dj boogie and you know i had pm and you know we were just scraping it just trying to figure it out now i got a you know pretty large staff and you know just is more delegation. Everything's bigger. We're playing big arenas. The production is bigger. It's just bigger now, you know. And it's just like you know, it's been a. We've been real methodical in in building it, taking the right steps to build it, and not skipping any steps. And you know, that's led us to where we are now. So you know, we're pretty thankful for that. What what kind of prep goes into like this upcoming tour, for example? Like how you know how many months in advance have we been preparing? Like how much staff is there? Right? Like just just talk to us about the scale because I feel like that's pretty interesting. So you know, we've been preparing. You know, we did we did a we did a, a big tour last year, yeah, North American tour, and we did some European dates. He yeah. he sells crazy tickets, by the way. Yes, like yes. like I, I was looking at some stats that I got sent by our our uh, mutual friend Rachel yeah. Jackson. Yeah. And I was like, this dude sells motherfucking tickets. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, say what you want about Boogie. If you're not a fan, if you are a fan, whatever. One thing that's undisputed is the quantity of tickets sold around the world. Like yes. it was, it was mind blowing. Yeah. He's a, uh, he's a special guy, man. You know, you know, this business revolves around the artists and the talent. You know, if, uh, you know, you can have the best team, but if the music doesn't hit, you know, then, you know, it's not going to work. So it's, 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 it's artist centric. And, you know, he's been able to touch fans in a way that, you know, makes them want to come out and see him in person. And then, you know, obviously we give them a show and they come back. You know, anytime we decide to do shows, they always buy tickets. And, you know, again, it's been something that we've been real, uh, we've, been, we've been real deliberate about. Because when we first came in, you know, a lot of artists and managers make the mistake of just taking the brown paper bag money. Mm. And, you know, going what do you to, mean by that? It's just, uh, you know, for, for, for lack of, in layman's terms, just going to the club. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, when you got a hot song that's buzzing across the country, all the promoters are calling you and, you know, you just go to the club, go to the club, go to the club. Quick licks. Quick licks, you know, 20, 30, 50, whatever the number is. And then what happens is when that song cools down, you, outside of the money that you might have made and some of the content that you would have 
captured, you don't really have a ticket history, a touring base mm. to, to 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 lean on. And uh, you know, you know, you can't you can't remove the club from the culture, like, you know, but you have to pick and choose, you know, which dates and then you, you know, the way we've been the way we we've been we've built Boogie's business is album tour, album tour, mm. album tour. And then clubs typically serve as the after party mm. you know and then when we're off cycle then we'll pick up a few club bags just to stay in stay on in, in, in at the top of people's minds but for the most part it's about selling tickets and selling out these venues was was the club bag like bigger than the initial touring in, bag in the beginning the club bag is going to be bigger right yeah. so you know your first Let's say you do a, a promo tour, you probably play between, you probably play in front of 200 to 500 people. You know, they're selling tickets, $10, $20. There's really no money there, right? And yeah, just do, doing the math. Even yeah. if the promoter gave you the 100% of the right. sales, you're still there's not no, making- There's no money there. And yeah. then, you know, and then you go to the club, you might get 10, 15, 20 grand, 25,000. And you could do that, you know, across the country. And it's easier. It's easier. It's so much easier. <laughs> it's, a, it's a walk through. Basically. So how hard is is it like when you're dealing with like did Boogie understand this or was he kind of like bro? Yeah. yeah, I mean you know <laughs> he, he see, see the guy has vision. He's always envisioned himself. You know he sees himself at one at some point becoming like the weekend playing in front of stadiums. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Beyonce like you know one of the greatest show on earth type of thing. So you know he understands in order to do that we have to take the steps you do your your small club shows really small 200 500 and you go to you know the ballrooms you know you graduate to the next step house of blues type venues and you go into your arenas and amphitheaters and stuff like that and then hopefully you get to that level where you could go into these, these stadiums and then in between that you play the festivals so we've noticed a lot of people mentioning that a lot of rap shows these days are not that interesting. A lot of people are just playing their MP3s, rapping over the song, jumping around. Mm -hmm. Are y'all, you know, considering that at all? Or do you take, what kind of steps you take so, to keep the show fresh and interesting? So he has a, he has a band, he has dancers, you know, we are, we have pyro and special effects. Yes. That's already, that's already, so, already yeah, way better than I was like, <laughs> okay, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. fuck us. Just like, a band. It's yeah. like, I, it's already getting band interesting. Band and dancers and pyrotechnics. I was like, okay, well, this is yeah, fire. It's just, and then he has, you know, you have the, the big LED walls behind you. Sure. We have props. Like the last, the last tour setup had high bridge behind them. Cool. You know, blow up a high bridge. So, oh, like the neighborhood? So the actual bridge. Oh, there's oh, it's a, a, okay. It is an actual, actual bridge. bridge. Okay. Not just the, in, yeah. In New okay. York well, City. I, I just, I mean, I now, it makes, yeah. now it makes yeah. sense. There's, a, there's an actual bridge in New York City called yeah. High okay. Bridge. All right. It's pretty high, I assume. Yeah, it's a I tall, mean, pretty okay. tall bridge. <laughs> it has just, a bunch of arches. Nice. Just stuff. while we're on like things that are being very literally taken yeah, right now. Okay. It's a high bridge. It's a high, it's called the High Bridge. I, I believe it was the first bridge in New York City. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, okay. it's in the Bronx. It connects the Bronx to Manhattan. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. So um, so you had that in the background and shit? Like, yeah, background. so you're really thinking through like... Yeah, and this is all him. You know, he's a creative and, you know, he's, he's you know, he's one of those guys that thinks about his career and business from A to Z. You know, and then, you know, we have a team that goes in and executes. Do you feel like every successful artist of his like stature does like is that a consistent theme would you say it all depends you know like like one of the misconceptions that i've that i that i think you know folks that aren't necessarily you know in the rooms with the artist camps and stuff like they think they think you know people every little thing is methodically like you know we thought about no sometimes it's luck you know sometimes it's timing you know what I mean? Sometimes you just catch a lightning in a bottle and then you, re you, you react to it. You know what I mean? So, you know, some artists, you know, they start off maybe not like that and then they grow into that. Some artists are, are never like that. They have a team. They just deliver the music and the team kind of like puts the play together. It all depends. Everyone's different. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's hard to say. But in, I, in my case, in Boogie's case, he's somebody, he's a, he goes off a field. So, you know, he, depending on how he feels when he wakes up on the, in, the, on, in the morning or in the afternoon, whenever he decides to get up, you know, that's going to dictate how the day is going to go. Bro, what you just said is so important. Everyone does think that, like, 
everyone in the music business that's operating at the highest level is just like geniuses. And I'm not saying that like people aren't smart and good at what they do because we've obviously sat with a ton of people who are very intelligent and are very good at what they do. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but but we've also (laughs) sat with a lot of people on here that have kind of said a similar thing of what you just said, where it's like, not all this shit is like as scripted as you guys saw it play out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the big word you said was react. Yeah. A lot of the shit just happens (laughs) and luck and luck, (laughs) but like seeing what happens, recognizing a moment and then, plotting around that, Mm -hmm. you know, reacting properly. There has to be, you know, number one, there has to be talent and the talent has to resonate with a fan base, Mm -hmm. right? Then you have a team that helps, you know, cultivate and, you know, exploit the talent for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of, everything else just fills in, but it's just all about the talent, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, the executives play a large role too because you have to, you know, some guys are raw, and you have to kind of coach them and develop them. You know what I mean? And then once you once once you've given them those that skill set, then they could go out on and, and do great things. But you know, there's a you know there's the, the talent. It's, it's really about the talent. You know? Yeah. And then sometimes one distinction to make is you know there's a lot of talented people that you know they haven't been successful in the business. It's talent, but then the people have to react to it. You know what I mean? Like if if you don't have a fan base. That's that's fucking with what you're doing. Can I curse on you? Oh fuck yeah! Fuck no! No, you better you better <laughs> fucking do it, Em. Yeah, if you don't have a if you don't have a fan base or a group of people that that are that are intrigued by what you're doing, it's not gonna work. Isn't it great that he asked if he could curse and then he replaced <laughs> fucking with with yeah, he intrigued took it out. by? He gave you permission. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just love that. Yeah. Um, is there one or is there at least one example that you can share of maybe something that? y'all did that was like of that reaction you know type of thing that we're describing you know what i mean just just for our audience to understand like in boogies just for example is, is there something that y'all saw or something that was happening that then it was like let's react to this i think you know when everything started you know it's just you know you just put music out and you know the people mess with it you might put a song out that the the reaction might be lukewarm you throw something else out and it goes, you know what I mean? So it's just, you know, when it's going and it's cooking, you know, then you 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 fan that flame, you know what I'm saying? And you just and you just keep going. Like, you know, th- there's a record that that he did. It's called Secrets. Oh yeah, I love that one. I didn't understand the record when he made it. There was there's no drums on that song. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've told this story before. There's no <laughs> drums on that song. I was like, bro, but you know, you have to give the artist space to be an artist. So I said, I right, if you if you like it, I love it. Like you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. That song ended up having a moment. I, I think it's platinum now. But, oh, yeah. it's got like half a billion streams on Spotify alone. Yeah. So yeah, I I would assume it's so plat. It's like you know, I I don't I never I never understood the record. Do you get it now? I still don't. Get it. <laughs> still doesn't get it. Yeah. Like like Boogie's you know, like I fucking told you, M. Yeah, I I still don't because you know obviously the guy lyrically inclined, he can rap. Yeah, you know what I mean. He, you know, I, I there's a there's an expectation anytime I press play on his music for it to be at a certain level. Mm-hmm. You know, even the stuff that we don't use is at the level. Yeah, right. So if it, if it, it's, it's, I know it's at the level, but I'm like, you know, what's this? But it yeah. ended up, you know, this is gonna be dope when you finish it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> one I'm of those. Like, bro, where's the drums? <laughs> you know, you know. He's like, it's done. It's yeah. it's similar to to look back at it, which is one of our biggest records. Like, yeah. There's really no drums on that record. There's no hi hat. Yeah. There's like a kick and a snare, but there's no hi hat. And that's a testament to how he his recording process because he uh the guy um he records to the melody, mm-hmm. and then the producer comes and builds the beat around it. I like that. You know, I'm a big fan of that. I love having an acapella to produce around yeah. or just an idea, a concept to go with. I yeah. think more artists, especially like in our community, so most of our audience is probably like aspiring artists that are, you know, maybe, you know, earlier on in their careers or not where they want to be, obviously, you know, long term in their careers. Mm-hmm. I think some of them do need to maybe listen to a lot of these like recording techniques. I think yeah. some of it is like the recording process. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we've had some pretty interesting ideas on like ways to spice up or like, you know, try something different when it comes to the actual like making of the music, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think what you said is, is so true is that like, if the music ain't hitting, I mean like, yeah, people can say what they want about like bad music is still, you know, becoming popular in some ways, but like it's not, it's gonna be here today, gone tomorrow. So like the real good music, the fact that, 
Boogie's still streaming shit from 2016, 2017. These are like hits, right? Mm -hmm. Like Drowning is still played. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's everywhere I, yeah, oh, it is? About to go down. Oh my God. Okay. So nine times platinum on that one. Okay. That's one of those yeah. ones I was a, yeah. like, a, that's, I use the word addicted to I've, that song for like, a while. From the time that I knew we were having this interview, I probably listened to it 20 <laughs> times. Like, I kept wanting to be like, all right, I'm going to get to the other stuff. You know, like <laughs> doing more. Back to drowning. And I was like, no, there's drowning. three records. It's drowning, look back at it, and swerving. Yeah. That are on their way to, like, you know, yeah. within the next years. I think drowning would be, it might be diamond by the time this album releases. Mm. And, um, my shit has to be up there. My shit is, I think, is like five or six times playing. Yeah, yeah. God, shit. No, <laughs> but he goes crazy, bro. Yeah. But no, I just think like it's important for our our folks to like understand what you're saying about how he's recorded some of these songs mm -hmm. that have resulted in like the not so traditional, but yet the fans fucked with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so who are we to who are we and to I say? I think it's easy to get into habits in the creative process. Like this is how I've always done it. So mm -hmm. if you don't, if you're not inspired or you don't have any idea for the day. You know, it's easy to just go, like, start going through the motions that you mm -hmm. typically go through. And I think that's never a good thing. Well, I also don't think our community, and, like, this is generalizing, so, like, fuck you guys who are already on my ass about this comment. But, like, I don't think that we're appreciating producers <laughs> enough. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it starts with the track, you know. It starts with the track. Like, you know, QP, you know, my partner, he, it's all about the music. He's big. He's, like... He's like A and R executive, right? So he's involved with all of the music that comes out of Highbridge, and you know, it always starts with the music. Like yeah. If the beat is not hitting, it's not right. Then you know, it's like it's like it's like um, it's like a tool. Like you're only as good as your man's only as good as his tool, mm -hmm. and a rapper's only really as good as his production. You know, you mm -hmm. look at. You look at all of the top rappers; they have top-notch production. Do you have any involvement with the music? I try to stay out of it, man. I'm yeah. 41 years old, man. Like, <laughs> Those studio nights aren't for you anymore, huh? No, nah, man. And and what sounds good to me may not resonate with the younger crowd. You know what I'm saying? So I try to, I let them kind of, but I, I, I know a hit when I hear one, though. Mm. You know what that's I mean? That's where I'm at. Yeah, that's, I I, that's where I think I kind of like sit in the whole like a and r -ing and like being involved in the music thing. is like, I don't think I do want to be in the studio and like, I don't think I want to be finding the like weird ones that are going to maybe be the secrets yeah. and the ones that do come out like super successful. But yeah. like you play me a hit record, I'm going to know, I'm going to know what it is. I do. Like, I do take credit for one record. Which did, did me wrong. Okay. Um, Why do you take credit for it? That song came from an old Isaac Hayes song, the, the, the production and Mary J. Blige redid it. It's called a song called, it's a song called I Love You on her. I, I want to say what's the 411 album. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. So I, I sent it to Boogie and Don Q, like, yo, y'all need to rap over this beat. I sent it to them like three, four years ago. He's good, you know, these dudes, they don't, they don't you know, ah, whatever. <laughs> so I, I was more proactive. I called the, the producer. His name is S Dot. Shout out to S Dot. Okay. I called Dot. I said, look, take this beat, sample it, and make it. So he called me. And he played it for me. I was like, put the drums here. I told him to move it. Like, oh, you were a and ring a little bit. I don't even want to say that. Executive producer. <laughs> but now, come on, him. I don't even want to take that credit, but I told <laughs> him. Like, it to you. You know, I, I told him to move a few things around. It's play. one song, bro. One we can song. give you this credit. Come yeah. on, man. Like, just I, one song. I told him, I told him, I, it's good. Play it for him. And then, you know, Boogie ended up laying down that song that we hear now. So, you Hell know, yeah. Every time I hear it, I feel pretty good about it because <laughs> yeah. I knew. Because he's, he's a guy, you know, when it the piano and the guitar are, are they they go well with his voice. Yeah, yeah, boogie for yeah. sure. And that piano, that piano is just so it's so powerful on that record. Yeah. yeah, and I knew he'd be able to do something with it. Oh, dude, for he just sure. needed a, a little modernization of yep. it. Had to yep. give it to a producer to update it a yep. little bit. Yep. Yep. So, so how quick was Boogie's rise to fame? Ah man, it, it, it feels like it happened quickly. Like you yeah. Know, you know, I remember because at the time I was living in I was living in the D.C. area, and QP and Bubba, you know, my brother QP, he called. He said, "Yo, I'm start a record label. Yo, I need an LLC. What I do, this and that." Because <laughs> you were the like corporate guy, like you and I talked about this. Yeah. Like, yeah, like tell the people what so, you were doing so like, at, at the, the time, time. At the time, I you know I had a nine to five corporate guy. You yeah, know, I was in finance and analytics. 
So, so they're calling you because they know you, yeah. you might know something about an LLC. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> yep. And then I had friends in the business as well. You know, I learned the game from a guy named Jay class. He was with Cardi B early on. Okay. So, you know, I just by hanging around with, just by hanging around them, I picked up a lot of, you know, a lot of managerial skills. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So I get, I like, you know, my brother would call, I'd point him in the right direction. He asked for a lawyer, say, yo, call this person. Well, I asked Jay. Jay would say, yo, call this person. So I'll, I'll <laughs> okay. pass it. I'll pass the info along. And then, you know, I remember I took a trip to New York and he was playing me uh, the music. And uh, he played me Bando, which one of the first records Boogie and Don Q did. And when I heard it, I said, man, you might have something here. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it just so happened. Like after he left me, they went to shoot the My Shit video. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah. I went to I went to mom's house. I was hanging out, and they went to the club and shot the video. Wow! So this was this was maybe February, Marchish, something like that. And then you know, by the end of the summer, they had a joint venture with Atlantic. See, I don't want our audience to hear that story. <laughs> Bordo. I know, like, no, but it's but I did want them to hear it because I think it's it's important though. Like, do you think that that was good for his? You know what I mean, like. So, How did he react to that like quick rise to fame? Like, were there any hard adjustments for him? Because I'm I'm thinking like money had to be like pouring in at that point, right? So it's a couple things, right? You know, we're pretty religious. Okay. So, you know, just as a collective. And I think, you know, we all believe God doesn't make any mistakes. It was meant to happen the way that it happened. Okay. And um, you know, the second point is is his talent, man. Like, you know, if, you know, I hate to sound like this, but if you've been rapping for five, ten years and nothing's kind of, is nothing's working out, then you should. You don't have to leave the music business, but you should try to probably pivot, mm -hmm. because you know, look at Sexy Red. She came. It feels like she came out of nowhere. She probably been rapping for a few years, but mm -hmm. she's smoking right now. And it, it doesn't take that long. If you, if there's something, if there's a spark there, that's that resonates. It's not going to take long for it to, you know what I'm saying? It's going to connect and then you're going to be off to the races. Like think about all the all the people that are that are doing well, you know, they you know, they've always like they they didn't come in and it was and it was like um how do I say? They didn't come in and 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 it, it might not have worked right away, but there was there were signs that there was something there that they should keep going. But if you're not getting that positive feedback to, and you've been doing it for a long time, then it's probably not it's not gonna work. It's interesting. What do you yeah. think about that take? I have I have some comments. I think <laughs> I think I feel there, like you would I, have something to say. I think there's a lot of practice and and you know preparation and try. I think once it happens it appears to go overnight, right? Right. Correct. But I still think there's a lot of behind the scenes work, you know, and he was obviously making music for a while. Mm -hmm. So it might look faster than it actually was, right? Well, I, and I just, I would usually be the person that would like wholeheartedly kind of disagree with what you're saying. But I think something you hit the nail on the head is, is like, if you've been doing it five, 10 years, I mean, it just goes back to the, like the definition of insanity, right? Like doing something over and over again, the same way, yeah. thinking you're going to get a different result, right? You got to change something. Something's got to fucking right. change. Either it's the music has to change, the image has to change, like the branding, the name, whatever, the producer, I don't give a fuck, something, mm -hmm. something has to change, mm -hmm. guys. And that's where, that's where I think he's right, mm -hmm. is that we have a lot of people that I look at and I think, oh, they, they've been doing it this long. And it's like, why hasn't, shit started to move and it's like well maybe it's because what you're putting out and the way you're putting it out isn't resonating with the fans the market is gonna dictate yeah. you know what's good the this market the market speaks in in the absolute truth yes because you know why saying? wouldn't it yeah. there's no incentive for them to not just like what they like yeah. and not like what they don't like you know, you know? we have a lot of discourse out here about the quality of music but bro you know, if you look at if you look at the music business as a whole, it's the most profitable it's ever been. Mm. The market is talking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
No, I mean, that's, that's something I, I always think about is like, you know, we, we've talked about this in several different ways about like, why is the quality of music bad in a lot of people's, you know, minds. And it's like, well, no, like fans are dictating what they like and everyone starts yeah. to pull the conspiracy theory cards of like, no, we're getting served bad music. It's like, you don't have to go listen nah, to bro. it. Let's know whatever you want. You don't have to buy the tickets to fucking sexy red sold me, out. Yeah. She's yeah. selling out like arenas borderline. That's, right that's now. another thing too. Like, <laughs> like if. If an artist is is streaming and you don't believe the streams, just look at the shows, man. That, That's it. Yeah, you can't you can't fake hard tickets, man. <laughs> no. you, can't. you can't. You can't fake hard tickets. You can't fake the reaction when they touch that microphone. Yeah, like you know, like you know, and then and then there's there's two types of tickets. Like you have the festival, which is you know there's a built in audience there already. Sure. But then a the hard ticket where you're the headliner, like you know. You know, we have we have Madison Square Garden coming up. Oh, mm -hmm. as a, you know, we, that's, you, that's pretty much sold out. Damn, you know, and, MSG. And you know, that's something that I'm proud of. You know, we, we we've been working toward that ever since we started. Oh, that's a dream for sure. Yeah, New and, York guys. Yep, and you know, you can't fake that, man. When that guy touches that stage, it's gonna be pandemonium <laughs> in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it just you know the market is gonna tell you what they want. And they're going to talk to you, you know, if you, and, and to your point, if you're doing something and it's not working and you, and you, you, if you, if you're able to change it to something that is working and I'm not saying change it to, and copy somebody, but you just got to find your voice, you know? Yeah. I also think adjusting your expectations is something that nobody does because it's like, yeah, maybe you're not going to sell out Madison square garden, but if you can work to find, you know, a thousand core fans. Correct that spend a hundred dollars on you Correct. every year. Correct. You know what I mean? You're making six figures. Like hundred percent. Th there's not enough people that are willing to like, everyone wants to be the super blown, crazy superstar. 100%. You I can make a that. decent living, like making music. That's pretty awesome. Right. I, I hundred percent agree with that. I think, you know, ultimately in business, you know, is revenue minus expenses equals profit. Mm. If you're, if you're, if you're in the green and you're doing this, and you, you know, you've won, you know what I'm saying? You, you might not, your profits might not be, you know, $30 million a year, but I mean, if you, if you know. Is that what you guys make? I was like, <laughs> bro. I mean, we, we, we do pretty good. We did pretty you see good. the whip he pulled up in, bro? I did. I pulled up right behind him and I was like, fuck, <laughs> I don't like doing this. You know what I mean? I don't like it. I like to be parked and inside. So I don't even have to look at what comes into the, the parking lot. Um, but no, man. So. I, you know, like I said, I assumed that money started to come in and, mm -hmm. and there was a, a former podcast guest and friend of ours, Naj Mula, who is a super dope A&R and, and, you mm -hmm. know, creative. Um, he tweeted something recently about this concept of like financial, like hardships that plague like artists that get like big bags. Oh, right? I saw like, this. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, you know, an artist, you know, an artist signs, they get a big advance and oftentimes they're blowing the advance, right? That's mm -hmm. just like the classic, it's mm -hmm. the classic athlete story. It's the classic rapper story, whatever. Mm -hmm. So his hypothesis was, Hey, maybe we should treat them like, you know, a W2 employee or something and give them bi-weekly paychecks Mm -hmm. of their advance mm -hmm. for the year as opposed to like this lump sum of money. So what are, what are your like initial thoughts on? I don't agree with that. Okay. What, what's your, what's your thought there? Treating us, treating someone that's famous as a W2 employee doesn't work because I mean, ultimately, you know, these guys, a lot of guys are coming from a rough neighborhood. You know, you want to get that money and move out. You, you're not the same guy no more. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to, you know, we've, you know, we've seen plenty of artists that have, that have unfortunately lost their lives in the, in the place that they grew up. Oh, you know what I mean? Damn. Why would you, why would you, you know, treat him like he got every two weeks, get a check? Like, come on, man. You, 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 you know, Interesting. you know, now that's very true. Prodigy, Prodigy says something, you know, when he was alive, God bless the dead. Yeah. Rest in peace. He said, Fuck rap. I ain't your average cat. I'm trying to make cream and that's that. You know, ultimately, you know, sports and entertainment, the the reason why these young kids aspire to be rappers and athletes is the is the riches that come with it. If you remove that, then you know, the pool of people that actually aspire to do that, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna de incentivize them to kind of chase it. Yeah. So I think you know. Do do you uh, do you think that's a good thing? 
No, I don't think so. I don't, I, I think. Cause like, it hurts me to even like hear that, even though I understand it. Right. Cause like as someone who didn't grow up in like extreme, you know, poverty conditions or, or, you know, something like that, I can still appreciate like, yes, wanting to chase a career path because it's going to make you, you know, yeah. certain amounts of money. At least you think it can. Right. Yeah. But I do hate that for like music or like athletics because I don't think that people should be there I mean, for those reasons. Really. I mean, look, is one of the greatest rappers, if not the greatest rapper that's out, Jay Z. I, I knew he was gonna say, "Oh, bro." I knew it was "Oh, bro." I'm gonna tell you, he's a hustler. I knew it was "Oh, bro." I'm gonna tell you flat out, he's a hustler, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, if, if, if imagine, imagine all the great music we would have robbed, been been robbed of, if a, a record label tried to put him on the W two. Yeah, no, I know. No, it's, it's this a good is, point. This, this I'm, a, I'm an employee, <laughs> homie. I'm an employee. You know what I'm <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think. You know, there's. The flow of funds in the music business could be better, you know. But I yeah. think I think slowing it down to the artists is not the answer. Yeah. I think yeah. you know you have to put you have to put uh, vehicles in place to 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 get them up to speed as it pertains to financial literacy. You know what I'm saying? Because you know I, I have a master's degree in business, right? You know, so you know I was doing well before I moved into business. So my lifestyle hasn't changed that much mm -hmm. since I moved into music. Yeah. You know, but I'm, you know, I I was financially literate. I was financially literate yeah. before I started. A 19, 20 year old kid is not going to have that. He's not going to have the luxury of experience. Do labels need to have like financial planners or accountants that they can like link up do with they? Their, put their artists You with? can't put that on a label because now <laughs> if an artist goes bankrupt, Oh. They can blame the label yeah. and say, you put this person with me. Like, you know, you, it has to be independent. And there's, 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 there's a already, conflict. Yeah, there's already enough blaming the label. They're, right. they're not going to assume yeah. any more risk than they already are. Exactly. So yeah. I, I just think, you know, you know, <sighs> mentorship is important. Yeah. You know, I've had some great people that, mm -hmm. I, that I've had the, the luxury of being, being able to talk to, you know, Kareem Biggs Burke from Rockefellers. Shout out Biggs, bro. You know, Biggs is legend, you know, legendary guy. And, yeah. you know, I don't speak to him often, but when I do, I always grab something that that's helped, that's helped me in the business. I talked to, I've, I talked to Yo Gotti a couple of times and he's mm -hmm. a really brilliant guy. Birdman, mm -hmm. um, Steve Carlos, Stephen Victor, yeah, you know, Gabby, you know, there's a couple, a lot of guys that I talk to, that have been doing this for us for a long time and, and just just it's like, you know, still sharp and still, you know, iron sharp as iron. So just by being in a room and talking to these guys, you know, you don't even you don't instant it's just like a mistake. You're gonna just pick up some game from mm -hmm. them. You know what I'm saying? That's the best. I love yes. just and that's why I love doing the podcast. It's yeah. really it's so selfish borderline. Yeah. Of me. We do this for us. We literally do this so we can just <laughs> soak up as much game as possible, yeah. bro. Yeah. Because yeah. it's exactly like you're saying, it's like you can't help but get better. Yep. You yeah. just can't help but 100%. be smarter by being around the people that are operating at like the levels that you want to, you know, either operate in because you're not there yet or just continue to elevate, right? Depending on where you're at. 100%. And yeah, no, that, that's so true, man. Um, all right. So describe what like in your mind, a perfect artist manager relationship looks like. Right. Cause I feel like I, I know there's different flavors. So I want to kind of just take like a general look at this. Right. And just be like, these are the things that should be in place for like the best case scenario artist manager partnership? I think um, it depends on the in individuals, right? You know, what works for me and my one, me and one artist might not work for me and another artist. You know? so, so, so let's actually contrast maybe two of your most different clients, so, right? So the way you work with artist X, if you want to say who it is, that's cool. And then artist Y, right? So, so let's, so... All of my artists, all of the artists that I deal with, they're of age, right? Then I have a younger artist who's not of age, Booba Savage. Oh, how old? You manage Booba? Yeah. I love Booba. Booba, you know, Booba, yeah. shout out to Booba. How old's Booba? He, I, he's 17. He'll okay. be 18 this year. Okay. But he was blowing up like years ago, yeah. even when he was nothing. So, really? 13. Yeah, Booba's, Booba signed the high bridge. Okay. No, I knew I knew of the name, but yeah. I didn't, you know, you know, Booba, dive in and Booba's see. Booba's a character, man. Yeah. He's a okay. real charismatic so, guy, man. So you're tapped in? You know Booba? God, yes. Okay. Yeah. Booba's, yeah, okay. Booba's I, I feel like I'm fucking up here, but I okay. All right. Years. All right. So tell me how you work, kind of like, so, yeah, so, yeah, how that plays into it. So the the big difference there, right? 
I'm dealing with an adult that can make decisions for themselves on this hand. Yeah. And then on the booba side, I have to deal with his, his dad, his parents. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That just sounds yeah. messy, bro. So, little yellow tape. <laughs> I'm not so, gonna... so it's just like your approach. Not red, but yellow. <laughs> your approach has to be different. You know what I mean? Because this is an older African gentleman. You know, I, I, when I sat with God, Yo Gotti one time, he, he told me something that helped me a lot. He said, you know, you have your way of doing business, right? You have a way of doing business. You, in your mind, you know, you're, you're not going to do bad business with anybody purposefully. You're not going to fuck nobody over or anything like that, right? And then, you know, but this person might have a, a way of doing business that doesn't necessarily match your way of doing business. So in order to get things done, you may have to go over there and understand how he's doing business, how he sees things from his point of view, and adjust your way of doing business in order to get things done. That's such a pride hit though, right? Or like eat. Nah, That's, that would be hard for a lot of people. I'm just going to tell you yeah, what it, mean, the way you just described that. I was like, yeah. some people would not be able to, I mean, you to know, like, you know, change the way that they operate in business. You have to be nimble though. Yeah. You can't be rigid. You know, the every day, like whatever, whatever the mission is, then you tailor your strategy for that mission. Ooh, you that's know what I'm one. saying? It's bars. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Spitting. Yeah, cooking, it's, it's bro. A, when you get to that point, you figure out how you're going to get to where you need to go and then you you execute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, I just think, uh, you know, if, if you find yourself being rigid and just you're not going to you're not going to last long in this business. You know, you know, there's a reason why the captains of this industry are the captains of this industry. Mm -hmm. People that have been doing business and this, people have been operating at a high level for 30, 40 years. Music has music is constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. How are these people able to stay stay in the top positions? You know what I mean? They adapt. They adapt. Yeah. You no, have it's to so be, true. You have to be adaptive. You have to be nimble. Yeah. So so which part of the business do you find yourself like most passionate about? Uh, is there like something, you know, because obviously I know you're an artist manager, like by default, that's like what your title is. But, yeah. you know, that can mean a lot of different things. So like, you know, what do you find yourself wanting to be it's, most? It's a few things. You know, I think the the executive role is really intriguing. You know what I mean? I, I'm for the most part, I'm a, an executive. Right. And, you know, I think you see how embarrassed he was about that. He's like, I guess I'm an executive. <laughs> yeah, like embarrassed I mean, to say, like, you're a fucking executive. Man. Let's go. I mean, the thing is, is, is I'm about the work. Right. I'm not really I don't care about the titles. I, I want to put the work because, you know, in, in this in this era of social media, everybody's celebrating losses and not you haven't accomplished anything. You celebrate. I want to put work in that can that can match up with the greats. And I, you know, in my mind, I have, and as a collective, I feel like we have a long way to go to get there, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to, you know, be patting myself on the back. But you know, to answer your question, as it pertains to the the, the different the different parts of the businesses, you know, the executive part, because when you come in, you're 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 wide eyed, you're you're, you're just trying to be hot. But then when you realize how much how much <laughs> how much revenue is being generated off of the music. Then you then it's like game theory. You start to you start to look at, you know, how are the pieces on the chessboard being moved? How do you position yourself to to make the payday? Like, you know what I'm saying? We've built a, you know, two, three hundred million dollar enterprise. But being being Whoa. being yeah. being how the business was was set up, we we're, we're unable to pull out that value. Because of because of the way we came in, you know, when we had, you know, compared to a lot of people that came in when we came in, our situation is pretty good. You know what I mean? Meaning, like the deal that you yeah. negotiated with Atlantic. Atlantic. Yeah, I'm just gonna like yeah, say right. it. Like, yeah. the, the, you know, for the time, the deal was pretty good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody was getting that deal, that type of deal. And you know, Atlantic, you know, they're, you know, they get a lot of flack, but I mean. They're great partners for the most part. They spend the money. They market the artists. They put their I mean? artist music on TikTok. Yeah, they do. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, ultimately you have to look within and take accountability for the success or failure of your enterprise. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, the executive portion and just, you know, the positioning, that's exciting because I know if we're able to apply what we've learned over the years, you know, we'll be able to really 
pull out a lot of revenue from this business. And then Yeah, so like signing new artists and then and artists. then their deals would be a lot yeah. you'd be smarter or like you just would be more experienced more, and more, knowledgeable. And more leverage. Right. Well, you yeah, have true. more leverage, you have the experience. You know, it took us, you know, we've been doing this six, seven years to build the Boogie's touring business to where it is. We might be able to do it in less time with another act. Yeah. Because of all the experience and, and the institutional knowledge that we've been able to amass over the years, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, another part of the business that's exciting is, you know, the peer group and the the, the amazing people that you run into on a day to day. You know what I'm saying? When you talk to these people and they have a respect and, and and they also share some of the experiences, like, you know, the, some of the some of the difficulties that you're feeling, you know, they're telling you, don't worry about it. I went through it the same way. Like, you know, when you're when you're operating in this business, you know, the experience is going to be the same. A lot of a lot of artists, managers and executives, they all have the same problems. You know, and we you know, we relate. It's like it's like an Alcoholics Anonymous me when we get together and start <laughs> talking about some of the problems and trials and tribulations that we have. And then I all right, am. All right, let's all right, let's do this. Let's do this. So we're at a managers yeah. anonymous meeting right yeah. now. Okay. You're, you know, you're about to share. I don't know if you've ever been to an AA meeting. I have, but like, you know. So I haven't smacked my artist in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, like what, you know, what is like an example of a problem Man. that you feel like all, all managers have been through? I think, you know, you know, the artists, you know, they have pers they're not just artists, they're human beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a human element, you know, these guys have girlfriends and mothers of their children they have they have mom dad cousin brother they have a bunch of friends they have so many things in their lives that can affect their mood and it that can affect whether they want to get out of bed and do some work mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so that's that's one piece you know they you know that's huge you know <laughs> it's, it's ben's literally biggest piece you know <laughs> i did management for a very brief stint and like that was my hardest thing yeah. is just like all the other shit that comes like if we can all just you know, operate and like do the job every day. I feel like yeah. I'd be very good at that, but that's the part that I found. Yeah, and then, hard. you know, you have a lot of artists that they're, they're, they're okay with being famous and not necessarily in it to get the money. So once they become famous and they're, you know, they've been able to have a few girlfriends and stuff like that, they become lazy. They mm -hmm. don't want it as much anymore. You know what I'm saying? You, so, you know, there's, there's different levels and diff, there's different things. Then you have the artists that's really ambitious and really want to do it. And, you know, they, they're excited. It's like, it's two, it's two sides to everything. Right. Yeah. But, and then you have, you have the business part of it. Like, you know, you're dealing with promoters or dealing with producers and record label, this, that, you know, and the experience is the same. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you when you're talking amongst your peers, you know, like for instance, when I talk to Biggs, right, Julie Greenworld, who's 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 like, you know, she's like high up in Atlanta. I don't even know exact title, but she's pretty much the boss. Her and Craig Calman. Yeah, Julie was at Def Jam when Biggs and Day J and Day. So Biggs knows Julie, and he, you know, he's dealt with her, and it's like. He can, he can, he can, he can give, he can give insight into his dealings with her. And Julie's great. You know what I'm saying? She, she just wants, she just wants great music. She wants to be able to market it. And she wants to, she, she wants to have successful artists on her roster because, you know, now these, these, these record labels are publicly traded and, you know, the books are, they're, they're out there, the SEC filings and, you know, you don't get points for having, you know, flailing artists, you know what I'm saying? She, she wants the same thing we want. Yeah. So it's just, you know, when you talk to people that, that have these dealings, you know, it's similar. Everyone has similar dealings. It's so funny what you just said though. It's like, I think if people just understood the perspective of like record label executives of that, they are, only want the exact same thing as you do. They do want you to be successful. Correct. Why would they not? Tax Correct. write off. They, <laughs> they're incentivized. Just say like they make money if you make money. Correct. So if they're not willing to invest into you, maybe we just start to look a little inward for a second. Like just for, and I'm not saying every situation is is perfectly like black mm -hmm. and white. Meaning like oh, because they don't want to invest in you, that means you're not worth investing in. Mm -hmm. There's differences in investment strategies, like any other company. Like maybe you're just not the right label. That's fine mm -hmm. but like maybe we should at least just be like 
what, wh- you know, where are they coming from at least? You know what I mean? Um, so, all right. So we got the peer group, uh, kind of like the camaraderie amongst your peers. I feel like that's good. Um, and then the executive side of thing, anything else that you're like most passionate you'd say about like the, you know, role you're in? I think, uh, the fan reaction. Oh yeah. Mm. You know, when that's gotta be the best, mm-hmm. that's one of the, that's what's the most rewarding. That's the only, that's the best, right? I swear, man. Boogie has a song called jungle. Anytime he performs this song, you get chills, man. Like, <sighs> Like because the fans love that. It's like a it's like a spiritual experience. The fans love that record. When they hear that piano and that piano drop, it's like boom, and it's like man, like mm-hmm. you know, it's like the Undertaker. Like yeah, you know, yeah. it's crazy. To me, just looking through Boogie's like show footage. Oh my God, he's got, to your point, such a crazy fan base that's just singing every fucking mm-hmm. word, lights mm-hmm. up, like the fucking sold out shows everywhere. I mean, it the just. Guys, you know, he's a, he's a special guy. Yeah, man. it gave me fucking chills just like watching some of the videos. I was like, yeah. damn, bro, these people are there. And then you think about, you know, what you had to go through during the recording process, the, the rollout, the release, and then. It, when once it's received a certain way by the fan and, and they're showing their appreciation at the show, that's just re- it's rewarding. Like I I come out for certain like most of the time I'm in the back just exhaling because the guys on the stage, you know, hard we, parts we, over. We we made it. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Did we get Boogie on stage? Yeah, okay, he's yeah. on there. <sighs> I'm cool Thank now. God. Now I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, some certain parts of the show I come out just to feel it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's what's going to give me the motivation to keep going. I was yeah. about to say, it's going to remind you why the fuck you just stressed out so much to get his ass on stage, Sweet, right? <laughs> like, we, we were in, wait, 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 we were in uh, Montreal. Yeah. Forget the name of this arena, man. There's probably like 15,000 people in there, man. Mm. You could feel the crowd like when he scream. You feel it. You feel the, the energy just touch you like it's crazy, man. We did the Barclays last year. Same thing. You feel that energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, just... Toronto, like, are we going to Australia? Like, there's so many places that, you know, you, you 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 know, when you're in the bubble, you get used to the guy, like, you know what I'm saying? But then, you know, when you go to these places and the way the fans react, so you realize God's a special guy, man. No, it, it does probably remind you of like why you're putting in so much work for this mm-hmm. artist or like for this creative. Because mm-hmm. to your point, sometimes I feel like you know people get too close to it. Yeah. Right. It's like, you, you know, Boogie on a way different level. And I'm not saying he doesn't give his fans like access to like who he is as a person, mm-hmm. but like you're there for the good, the bad, the ugly mm-hmm. and everything in between. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, sometimes it's tough to remember, like from a fan's perspective, right. What, what are they loving about this guy? Because it is so much, it's work still at the end of the day sometimes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like, that's gotta be beautiful, man. Just like re- getting that reminder that has to be yeah, like man. that dose of, I'm telling you, a man. A motivation, like you said, you know? You know dude, when, you're, when you're going through it, when you're in the doldrums and you're going through it and, you know, you have a show and you feel, you feel that energy, the excitement is like, man. And, and, and it, if, if I'm management, right, I can only imagine how he's feeling. Right. As an artist, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because these are his, these are his songs, these are his music. You know what I mean? And you know, I can only imagine the feeling to be up there rocking fifteen thousand people. They singing your shit work for an hour, adrenaline, hour and thirty rush, minutes, going crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a that's a drug. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. No, you know, seriously, man. Like you know, the 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 you you tear away the financial part, and I you know earlier I mentioned you know you do it for the money, but that part alone, you know, I'm sure people would do that for free. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You, they pay to do that. You like. That's a yeah. feeling that you <laughs> seriously. That's a feeling that you is very very difficult to duplicate. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, absolutely, man. Um, all right, so you mentioned kind of like the behind the scenes stuff that that leads up to these like big shows, right? Yeah. Like there's the there's the recording process of the album. There's the marketing and rollout of the album. What's what's your favorite rollout that you've been a part of? Um, is there is there, is there one that comes to mind of like your favorite? And not that enjoyable, man. Because <laughs> oh shit, don't say it, <laughs> him. To be honest with you, man. Don't say it, him. Because oh, you, sh- you know, <laughs> the rollout, the rollout is you know, it's work, man. Like and you know, 
you have to go get up early, go do interviews, go do this, go do that. It's just it's work. And you, you're saying you hate interviews? <laughs> no, I mean I don't hate them. Okay. I don't hate them. But okay. you know, it's, I know I was like, this is awkward, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> this guy. What do we force him to come? <laughs> Jesus, yeah. man. He's talking about bookie. I guess Rachy must have been like, yeah, you really got to go do this yeah. interview, bro. <laughs> the, the 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 just the marketing aspect, like you yeah. know, you know, it's just you, it's a, it's a it's a process that you know it, it also again it depends on the artist. I know. You know, this guy, he don't like interviews. You know what I'm saying? He don't, he just want to do his music, put it out, go on tour. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just put music out without some type of intentional rollout. What about what content? Saying? With making, yeah, you have to kind of force him to make content? Yeah, man. If you look at his Instagram, he barely posts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, I wasn't going to say shit because, yeah, you know. He's, because he's, 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 an, he's a musician. He's a, his real name is Artist. That right. was insane to find out, yeah. by the way. I was like, there's no way his mom had a fucking crystal ball yeah. and was like, I'm naming yeah. this kid Artist. Yeah. And I'm stamping that shit. And here he goes. The guy's yeah. an artist, man. He's about the music. He's yeah. about the art, you know. Mm -hmm. The money comes secondary, but he's he's a he's a creative. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, you know, and, and creatives are not they they they're not the most they're not the easiest people to deal with when you're a business person. Yes. Because you know, they think with the left side of their brain and you think a certain way. Him and I are the same sign, so I understand them most times. Mm. But it's just like, dude, we gotta do this or we gotta do that. And it's like let me know what you need so we could kind of get through this and do what we need to do. So, so how often do you guys get into it? We don't. Really? You know, we're both Sagittarius. We're, we're like, we're like, we're like conflict averse. Oh. Because if a Sagittarius starts to speak their mind, it's going to be piercing. Mm. So we don't, you know, we both could feel like, All right, I'm going to give him a few days. <laughs> you know, he's going to give me a few days. You know what I mean? And then, We'll come back when we're cool. I'm like, yo, hello? And I don't force. I just, yo, what you need? What you want to do? You want to do this? Yes, no? All right, cool. And then we move on. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if it's, if, if, if for, for him in particular, if it starts to feel like a job, then it compromises the, 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 the his creativity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I try to be as easygoing as possible with him. It's interesting though. Like what, so it was like 2016 when first project, yeah, you know, released right for him. Mm -hmm. What what era was like? What was going? Was that like? Because it wasn't clearly like the TikTok era. It's so like what was SoundCloud, happening? SoundCloud. It was era. SoundCloud. Okay, did he see a big? Was he big on SoundCloud he's, or he's like the big one of the biggest? Okay, cool. So that was a big. He was he was the SoundCloud one of the sound, top SoundCloud rappers. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, and he's, and so and that's where I feel like our audience also like loves to just be like, well, Boogie doesn't post his fucking Instagram, and it's like, guys, he, he built his career in a totally different. Like, if you're building an, an artist now, if you're trying to break an artist now, don't you feel like, or I guess, how important do you feel like them being? willing to and eager to post a lot on social media. Do you think that's like a, a prerequisite now or, or not even? I think I think it depends on the artist. It depends on the music. And then what, what type of artist you're trying to be. If you're trying to be like, for instance, you have like the backpack rappers or the real, uh, uh, you know, lyrically inclined guys. Lyrical, miracle guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, you know... Those guys might not necessarily, their fans might ne not necessarily discover them on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Or they might not discover them where, you know, a lot of the contemporary popular music is being discovered at. You know what I'm saying? So to force them to do that is kind of intuitive because their fans are not there. But if if your fans are, you want to go where the fans are. Mm -hmm. So if the type, if your target market is on TikTok or if they're on Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and you want to you want to service that, you want to service them there because that's that you know, look, you take Instagram for 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 an example. When we started, Instagram was just you know picking up. It was no real Instagram algorithm. Everything was chronological order, mm -hmm. and it was who you followed, who you That's follow, yeah. and, and 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 who follows you. Yep. So if someone follow, if if you have two ten million followers and you post something, ten million people saw that post. Mm -hmm. That it doesn't work like that no more. Nope. So how are you going to reach ten million people 
on online. Yeah. You know, you have to you have to figure that out. Yeah. And it depends on what type of music you're making, you know, it depends on how much money you have to spend. There's so many factors. I don't I don't want like what I'm I, what I'm trying to I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, there's no there's no there's no rhyme or reason, there's no textbook way to break an artist. Because if there was, the labels wouldn't need high bridge the label. They wouldn't need QC. They wouldn't need, you know, Top Dog and those guys. They would there's like all the all the production houses, um CMGs and if they if they knew how to do it, then there would be no space for guys like me. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you grab the artist, you figure out, you know, how the fans reacting to them and then you chase it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I think, I think, I think, you know, I, I'm a reference Sexy Red again. I think she's doing a great job, you yeah. know, on her, her social media presence is, is amazing. And she's using social media to sell the music. Some people use social media to sell their ce celebrity. She's using social media to sell records and yeah. tickets. Mm -hmm. I think she's doing it the way she, it's meant to, that you should be trying to do it, but someone else trying to do what she's doing might not work for them. Yeah. I guess I still just like, I in my brain do feel like even me, I come across like backpack rappers that have crazy views on like TikTok, for example. So I, I just feel like any genre has like found its home on social media in some mm -hmm. way. So that's like the only way, and this is me just not having been doing it since mm -hmm. 2016 either. I basically came in to the music sphere during this like content era. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you've even been doing it like before I came in. So like maybe you have a different perspective, but for me, it's all I know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm so passionate about it. And people do always like come at me and be like, and then, you know, content's not the only way to break, you know, music and shit. And I'm like, I don't know any other way. And like then, let me for tell, free anyway. Let me, yeah. let me, let me tell you this. That's the way you do it, right? It might be another platform or another thing that's that that's gonna let people in through the back door, because when you when SoundCloud popped up when we came in, that was new. Yeah. That was the back door. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm. So you don't want to limit yourself to what's everybody's doing. There ah. might be a back door somewhere that you can exploit that nobody's been able to exploit. Damn it, M. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Damn it, M. Yeah. It's like it's like you you do need to. Place bets elsewhere, I, I guess, is kind of what you're... And you might, you might, you might get lucky. Yeah. You might find something. You know what I'm saying? Like it all comes back to try everything. So, so see what sticks. So QP says something to me all the time. You know, him and I, we talk all the time, and he's like, "There's who did it first, and then there's who did it best." best. You know, so, bars, bars. So if you're if you're if you're gonna do TikTok, Instagram, you know, the the first person is long gone. Mm -hmm. You got to do it really good at a really high level. Yeah. What does that entail if you don't have the resources? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, maybe there's a back door somewhere that you could sneak in through mm -hmm. and be the first there. You know, but yeah. again, it, it, it's going to be reliant on the music. If the music ain't here, it has to be good that's, first. That's, Nothing that's, else matters. Dude, the music yeah. has to be good, y'all. Yeah. And on that anything, note, anything we say, it's like <laughs> start off with good music. Yeah. Sure. On that note, Henry, we've entered a final segment of the podcast. M, buckle up, my friend. Yes, sir. Damn, so many fucking bars, bro. Gems, for sure. <laughs> I knew this one was going to be good when Rachie hit me. I was like, okay. I'm going to see if we can get a couple more here in this final segment. <laughs> this is called the Rapid Fire greedy Rampage. You bastard. Greedy? We didn't, we didn't get enough, bro. Just getting more. Okay, that's greedy. We got M here. He's okay, not coming go. back. You're right, bro. you're right, you're right. Hey, why not? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so there's going to be three sections. Mm. I'll explain them as we go. Just start off with some short answer questions. Starting with, how are you doing? I'm well, man. It's a good convo here. Hell yeah, man. Good convo. Appreciate you, bro. Indeed. And what are the three most common mistakes that you see young artists making who are struggling to advance in the music business? <sighs> it's difficult to answer. Yeah. Because... You know, I wouldn't call it mistakes. You're just trying things. You're trying to find your voice. You're trying to find your your place in this thing. I don't I don't want people to I don't want to say something and people don't try things and and maybe that experience will help them find their voice and find where they fit in in this in this in this culture. Mm 
That's a bar. So, you know. Can we reword it? Like, I love that non-answer. Uh, no, that was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. It's, you got to try shit. That goes back to what no, he said. try shit, man. You yeah. got to, bro. Like, Cause, cause so not what, trying enough shit maybe is what? Yeah, just, just. It goes back to what you were saying earlier about like if, if you're doing the same things and it's yeah. not working, then you have to try something else. You have yeah, to pivot. Try shit, man. Try shit. Be like, be, you know, there's a reason why the guys at the top of the genre are there. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, the guys are creative as fuck, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? They they write songs for themselves. They write songs for other people. You know what I mean? They, they just, you know, and 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 some of it is God given, and some of it is repetition and just trying shit. Like, you know, sure. It's just just be a creative man. <laughs> it's huge. All right, and you can sign any three artists that you want to Highbridge right now. Who would you bring on? Oh shit. Unlimited budget too. Yeah, whatever advance so, you so need. People that are anybody that are like already out there. Well, yeah. yeah. I'd say, should, should we say he can snipe someone off their deal? And oh yeah, I mean, you can just sign anybody. Anybody. Anybody's on the table. Any three artists. Any three artists could be people we know, or if you, you know, want to manifest some people we don't know. Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> the three. Yeah. <laughs> Most I mean, revenue generated. This yeah, guy's a man. business man, bro. The companies go in places. And, yeah, and they're amazing too. Like they all make such good music. Yeah, man. I'm I wanna be at the top of the food chain, man. That's gonna get Same, you. Same, bro. Yeah. Same. That's definitely gonna get you. I'm there. signing the Swifties immediately too. Yeah, and and the beehive. I swear. Um <laughs> this uh segment I'm calling matchmaker. Okay. We're gonna take Boogie, we're gonna take Don and Who's the third artist that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, Booba, Booba Savage. Booba, and then I think there was one more. Trap Manny. Trap Manny. Um, pair each of them up with a producer that you would love to see them work with. Hmm. So Boogie, I put him with Jahan, Jahan Sweet. Heard of him. And, and the reason why is because Jahan produced two of our biggest records. Mm -hmm. ah. He did Jahan did look back at it. He looked, looked back at it. He did drowning. Yeah, yeah. I just saw that so, credit. So yeah. I would put Boogie with Metro, put him with Jahan, I put him with London on the track. Yes. Um just the people that he's found he's found a pocket with. I'd put him with those people. Have yeah. they worked since? Like you know, have him and Jahan worked since those it's two? It's been a while. That's it's been insane. A while. Jahan's a yeah. big deal, man. He I does, know he is. No, no he does, I get it. He does Taylor Swift. He no, does I get Travis. it. So does, is it like a just? It just like schedules ships, don't yeah, schedules yes. two ships passing in the night. Okay, man. okay, yeah. yeah. You know, but so it's not a lack Jahan, of. Man. At least send a pack, Jahan. Like, <laughs> nah, nah, he's not. He says, oh, he, he sends, sends packs. Oh, he does. I was like, he doesn't send packs. The magic's bro. in the room. Magic's always in the room, bro. It's always fuck the pack shit, bro. Drowning wasn't sent in a pack. Yeah, bro. All right, yeah. So Don Q, who are we pairing him with? Ah man, anybody. And this is manifesting right now. This could happen. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm with you. I put Don Q with um. I put Don Q with with Just Blaze. Okay, Ooh. Just Blaze. All right, Booba Savage. Who who we pairing him with? I already know I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put Just Bla I'm gonna I'm gonna put Booba with Rico Beats. Okay. Mm. That's because Booba has like that drill. Yep. And Rico Beats, shout out to my man Rico. He's the guy that did Pop Smokes. He kind of curated Pop Smokes, all of his, his whole sound. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, Drill's kind of, it's kind of morphed into different things. But Rico is like the, he's like the essence. The, he has that sauce, like, you know, that grittiness. Like, oh, that New York yeah, drill? Yeah, that, for sure. Rico's amazing, man. Shout out to Rico, man. Dope. Okay, okay and who was the last artist? Trap Manny. Trap, Trap Manny, Manny, yeah, yeah. Who we putting him with? Ah, man. I put trap with probably like Southside. Okay. Hard. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Dope. All right. Okay, my last one. I look forward one, to all uh, those collaborations. Yeah. When they happen, soon. yeah, they will. We're gonna make a clip. They will. From this, it's gonna be great. Uh huh. We spoke uh, that shit in real existence. This last part is also a new segment. Um, God, this guy's. <laughs> I didn't approve today. these segments, anybody. Just so we know. I came up with this on the golf course today. It's oh. called "How many times have you said it today?" And your word is fuck. Ah, uh, maybe like three times today. Three oh, times. All here, I would yeah, say. All here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say it a lot. <laughs> yeah. I try not to say it in front of my two-year-old son because he's starting to repeat stuff, but... Uh, oh, he's going to be saying it. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. It's okay in 2024, I think. Um, <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. The next session Thanks, is... Thanks, coming from a non-parent. The next section is called the this or that. I'm going to give you two choices. You should pick one. Uh, 
Starting with rapping or singing. Hmm. The age old debate. I think you can't have one without the other, man. They go so well together. That's why it's a good question. That's why I'm asking. You have to pick one. <laughs> I mean, I'm from the old school, so I would have, I would have to say rapping. Yeah, cool. I do yeah, it, bro. Cool. Come on. Drums or melodies? Give me. I need drums. Yes. SoundCloud or YouTube? YouTube. In the studio or on tour? On tour. America or Africa? America. Discover new artists or binge your favorites? Binge my favorites. And finally, become a full-time rapper or leave the music industry. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> He's going back to corporate, bro. <laughs> Can't do it. I don't know. You had some bars, bro. The way you spit that prodigy lyric. Yeah. I felt that shit. Even bro. just some of the gems, like if we like if we just made them rhythm. Got them with the right wise, producer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's very possible. Right, yeah, I mean. <laughs> I the lyrics are there. The lyrics are there. <laughs> yeah. uh, the last part is the word association. Yeah. I'm going to say one word. You just say the first word off the top of your head sure. that you think of. Here we go. Starting with hip hop. God bless it. Gambia. Home. Cake. Good. Album. Platinum. TikTok. I don't get it. Garbage. Stinks. Strap. There's one nearby. <laughs> <laughs> Diddy. Next one. Lil. Wayne. Hi. Bridge. Let's go. This has been M. Hi, Bridge, the label. Artist manager, A Boogie, Don Q, Trap Manny. Dropping gems on your head. And Thank more. you for sharing, man. Thank you, bro. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. Rachel yeah. Jackson, shout out to you. We still need that Rachel interview, though. It's like, was this her way of just like, you know, she's like, M, can you do Take this interview? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, this is amazing, man. Seriously, appreciate you coming Absolutely. on, bro. So much fucking gems on this episode. Yeah, good bro. shit, man. Yep. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. Leave us a five star review or keep it fucking moving. Until next week, Henry, what are we doing? Get out of here. Pop that shit like one more time. And pop that one more time. Pop that shit like one more time. And pop that one more time. Oh.